When we are doing the will of our true self, we are inevitably doing the will of the universe. In magic, these are seen as indistinguishable. That every human soul is in fact one human soul. It is the soul of the universe itself. And as long as you are doing the will of the universe, then it is impossible to do anything wrong. Shalom and happy Halloween, you Halloweenies. I am Keats Ross and this is Prague Magic. I am so excited for this guest. As most of you know, I just released a podcast with my brother that was recorded in the summer. Um, but Patreon subscribers will know that I've actually had a lot of interviews that have yet to be released. But my next guest... Lux Estrada was recorded last week, and it was just a phenomenal time. I'll start with this. I'll start with a quote from Lux's Gratis Animus, her audiomantic work. And this is what she had to say about it. When I began this project, these internal walls were related to issues surrounding A, a desire to be heard, seen, and understood but feeling blocked by fear and shame b the need for connection to and expression of sexuality and sexual identity and c philosophical questions about the existence and nature of self or selves and where this quantity might be located and with that lux estrada embarked on a brave audiomantic work Gratis Animus. Gratis straddles that liminal space between trauma and elation, existing in sonic reverie as a journalistic testament to understanding both. Since I've been privy to Lux's wonderful podcast, Lux Occult, uh, she has been a beacon to the anarchic magics I hold so dear. Whether it's her incredible podcast or her work within the Green Mushroom Project, Luxa has become an invaluable voice to those looking to get strange and stranger still. I can't quantify, in words, the amount of respect I have for her commitment to dive deep with a smirk, to cast a creative wide berth, and to usher a communal space for those of us in the throes of the lurch. It was truly an honor to chat about her ovomancy, or egg magic as she calls it, her aforementioned sound sigil gratis animus, or her seminal collective cast within the Green Mushroom Project. Stay tuned till the end, because we also share some Halloweeny recommendations. And with that, I'm not going to stand on too much ceremony. So slither hither, weirdos and witches. Happy Halloween. Here's my chat with Lux Estrada. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, dude. I'm super honored to be here and uh, yeah, super stoked for our conversation. I mean, I, I just like, w I initially wanted to do like a Halloweeny episode like I did last year with Douglas. <laughs> but the fact that you <laughs> haven't been on the stream yet or like on, you know, Prag Magic, I was like, that's such a bullshit gimmick. Like, I there's so much I want to talk to you but about. But Halloween is super fun. So we totally <laughs> should talk about it a little bit, right? Yeah, like for sure. okay. <laughs> at the at the end, yeah, if we get to it for sure. But I just, okay. you know, I really want to put the focus on all your wonderful projects. And um, you know, in kind of a linear way, um, if people know you they have seen the Instagram, you know, whether you're doing the Green Mushroom Project or this wonderful, what I call Ovamancy, what you call Ovamancy, I think, right? Sure. Egg magic. I, I mean, yeah. What was that? 
egg, egg magic. I mean, egg it doesn't magic. matter. Yeah. Egg yeah. magic. Um, o- Ovomancy, I feel it gives it like a strictly uh, maybe divinatory cast, hmm. whereas egg magic might be more broad because there's a lot of things that you can do with an egg, right? There's This is sort of a classic uh, magical tool and symbol. So, fuck yeah. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you more about that because, you know, as I jokingly say to you all the time, you should start a cafe. Like all these wonderful <laughs> pictures of this like beautiful routinization of, you know, uh, as something as simple as a meal, you know, and creating it to something as magnanimous as you have. Like, where did that come from? When did you start doing that? Um. Well, the Instagram is pretty recent, you know, like when I make these meals for myself, I don't always uh, make this huge fancy display out of it, okay. right? Like there, there's an intent. I just imagine that's every meal for you. <laughs> well, there's a, there's like an added layer of intent there when I'm, when I'm going to be photographing it and publishing it. Like there's that adds like another layer to the ritual itself, right? Like, right. cause that's part of it. Um, but I think for me, um, one of the attractions with using, I guess food in general, not only is it such a, uh, intrin- thing that's intrinsically linked with our survival and, you know, with all kinds of like sensory images of the past. And um, there's just something like for me empowering about taking something that um, has been a source of like pain in the past. Like there's been, I have had issues with food in the past. Like I've struggled um, when I was younger with eating disorders and stuff. And so taking something that, has that kind of like power and subverting it into something that's useful to you is um, something I'm just really into. That's kind of a thing that comes up in in my work and and obviously other people's work a lot. Yeah. I mean, like a a big tether to me, you know, and, you know, we'll get to your, um, your audio mantic project in a bit, but uh, a big tether to me was how you kind of recontextualize the trauma that you've been through you know, through your praxis. And that's a, that's a major thing for me as well. And I didn't know that about you. I didn't know that, you know, you had eating disorders and this is a way to kind of, you know, work through that. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, just in terms of like the research that I've done a saying, um, I can't remember where it originated and, but I think it's helped me to contextualize a lot of things. Like, I think that, um, people often associate trauma with drama right. and they're not necessarily the same thing. Right. Like, and I think that there's a lot of different variations of this and like, um, so I think as gods, especially after these last couple of years, if, if people weren't experiencers of trauma before, they certainly fucking are now, <laughs> right, you know? Sure. So like yeah. there, I think that there's, um, a lot of room there for, uh, everybody to be able to like you know find these types of practices useful yeah but you know and it's something that i struggle with too um as far as something as the routinization of a day and i think like really getting into the muck and the mire about you know meals or breathing you know like simple like human necessities that i think Mm -hmm. we all take for granted is uh you know it's it's a wonderfully uh magnetic to think about and it's uh definitely caused me to you know look at my burrito differently <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> i love that and i'm not gonna make a perverted joke about it but... no don't, don't. Yeah. <laughs> but no i think that that's i cool. walked right into that one yeah. <laughs> i'm so sorry but i think that um i i think i like what you're saying there's yeah. something it, sometimes it can be difficult even to do the most basic things and to turn that into a ritual, into something that has this other component to it, it can actually really help to solidify that in terms of, um, you know, building habits and actually finding a place of power in that uh, place where it used to be difficult. Absolutely. And it seems like you you sing a lot with the current of chaos magic. Like where, where did that kind of, where's the genealogy of that? Uh, you know, well, you know, these kinds of taxonomic distinctions, they're also mm. very amorphous to me. I know, me. I'm not, I'm not like, big <laughs> on the labels either, but... I think you know. that, like, I one of the main reasons I would say that I associate so much with that sort of, like, current or whatever you want to call it, um, 
would be the the way that I sort of understand the like theory like chaos theory and this sort of mm -hmm. like idea of like this global nature of systems and of complex systems and being able to sort of like think about that in like a really um maybe sort of like meta way but then also thinking about how that applies at a lot of different levels of our understanding and our experience um so yeah i think that that's probably the where i would e most easily draw the line sure yeah yeah, because, you know, and, um, you know, I'm a fan of the Green Mushroom Project, which, you know, I hope to dive into as well. But I know that um, following your work and, and your communal work within like the Faith Blind Council Discord server or, you know, one of the uh, most fun places on the Internet. Yeah, it's situ <laughs> you know, situations like that where I think like you've definitely found a great communal voice. Um, is uh it's extremely strong and i know that you're always like safe to say for any newcomers in that you're like well you know this is a chaos magic server you know <laughs> like sure i mean nothing it's, is true that, everything is permitted you know? yeah and couched within that is that like whatever you're into like that's fine we don't care yeah, exactly. like just don't be yeah. a dick <laughs> like that's yeah, all we I care know, about right? like... yeah it's so hard for occultists not to be dicks <laughs> so i appreciate it um <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about the green mushroom. And I know it's something that you've been working on because uh, that's that was like an audiomantic thing, too. Right. Um. Well, it was originally conceived just as a sort of well, it, um, there's a lot of different aspects of the project and a lot of different layers. But the original idea of it was to to form this network, this, you know, web the um the sigil that we came there that I came up with or I sometimes say we because I'm not quite sure where I got it so um, sure, that's we is fine yeah. too um but like the sigil that exists for it is a hypho sigil which means mm -hmm. web it's kind of you know there's a lot of inspiration taking from things like the linking sigil and stuff but this one is sp designed for different purposes it is a linking sigil but it's designed to build this specific current for this um yeah it makes perfect sense as just like the neural network, the fungal idea, right? Of yeah, the yeah. yeah. The, the sort of objectives are to like, you know, to establish this network and then also to, you know, establish a sort of community of people that wanted to connect this, you know, for some context, this began almost a year ago um, on Halloween in 2020. Um, ah, so exam. this is sort of, yeah, in the the thoroughs of, of the, the pandemic and, and the isolation of all of that and stuff. And so people that wanted to like, you know, reach out and connect and like do this in a magical way um, to have a, a, a space for that to happen. Um, and like through that happening, help people become more agentic through using magical technology. And then also through like forming this kind of community and this like so solidarity um, to sort of like build a buttress and a safe place away from some of the um, gross things that are happening in occultism mm. and, and else probably always have been happening in occultism sure. surrounding louder you know, now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Surround surrounding gross things like uh, <laughs> white supremacy and sure. other nasty business. So yeah, basically to sort of get away from that shit and do something cool but there's a lot of different elements to the project and and we do a lot of uh audiomancy and all kinds of other things there's mm -hmm. an astral temple we do some group rituals together there's all kinds of stuff so you yeah. had you had some project coming up and i liked it because you know we just finished our um you know audio sigil thing and i like the way that you're approaching your communal one where it was, I think your uh, your template was to use something like already recorded, and you know add to it, scramble it up so that there's like a firm tether between all submissions. Is that correct? Um, sort of actually. Yeah, that's that's kind of kind of it. Um, so the sigil that you're talking about, the sound sigil you're talking about, is for the Halloween ritual that we're going to run, um, and this will also be the launch of a sort of like new element of the project which is a network of servitors right um, yeah. they're called sapratrophs the um, project was initially conceived of the specific element of the project was initially conceived of as 
Um, well, somebody came to us and was like, well, how, like, I would like us to make a tech that is a sort of like prophylactic measure against like being in these gross, scary situations that, Interesting. you know, yeah. I find myself in every day because I have to ride the bus and, you know, the story about this person's life. And we're like thinking like, okay, well, that's, we would like to do that as well. <laughs> like somebody, right. you know, asked like, oh, like a hate condom, right? Or something. And so <laughs> we're like, I love it. It took yeah. some time to think about like how this kind of conceptual, like how we could conceptualize this. Obviously, there's a lot of different configurations that this could take. But what we came away with eventually was a sort of magical species. So these are going to be like a species of servitors that, like any species, have a sort of like shared characteristics um, among them that make them a species but then each individual can also be individualized uh, mm -hmm. as you work with it as a practitioner so getting back to the sound sigil this is going to be to launch them um, it's going to be a sort of like pool of epigenetic programming for them so i've mixed a track um, and i'm asking people to submit um, statements of intent surrounding like Again, how the like sort of epigenetic programming of these servitors will work, and um, yeah, I've yeah. gotten yeah, I've gotten some really beautiful submissions so far. Like the one, but one of the things um, with it is that like I've just asked that when people record these statements of intent, they do it within the context of like a very simple ritual that I wrote up. Right. Yeah. It's so, very yeah. Distinct. Yeah. Um, I noticed that too. There was also like a you know a warning to us musicians not a warning but like a hey if you want if you want to be weird with this like make sure to keep this you know succinct oh yeah well i mean that, yeah. i'm i okay so i've been making music like not for very long and i mm -hmm. i know absolutely nothing about it like I'm very, very poorly informed about music. So, well, no, like, I mean, you could have pulled me, and I can't wait to talk about Greatest <laughs> Anime. But, but uh, yeah, I figured, like, okay, well, I know that the beat is this, so anything right. that matches this might work with it. So What yeah. I love is, like, uh, just the synchronous, like, aspects of, you know, what We The Hollow just did with the audio sigil, and, like, uh, you know, what you're, what you're doing with gratis animus and what you're doing with this ritual but i love that you're very much more you know i i was uh you know my thing with the uh the submissions right was you know i wrote a prompt for it and put it on with a hollowed and i was i was finicky about you know like just wave like make it a wave file or you know what mm -hmm. i mean like don't just do uh soundscapes <laughs> you know <Or> like, <laughs> hopefully it's not just something you know what i mean like more of sure. like an artistic kind of thing but i was like but you know you're free to do whatever because it should be a representation of your like anarchic magics and i love what you're doing is you're keeping the tether intact where you i like i had to spend a year trying to figure out how to tether everything right and i love that with yours it's like it, the the tether is the message and you know everyone's oh, yeah. anarchic kind of parts come to it and i just thought that was really cool and i you, you know i think that uh it's it's rare to find other individuals especially in these communities that still kind of produce and do you know these wacky projects communally and i think that you know the advent of uh you know the beer virus or whatever that shall not be named um you know, it really did like bring communities together. It did make shit a lot louder, um, mm -hmm. you know, terrible stuff a lot louder, but it really did like bridge a lot of gaps for us. And I think we're all, you know, coming together in different ways. And I just thought it was really wonderful that you're, you you no, know, you you keep pushing this out. I, I wanted to get to you're like, oh, sorry. Oh, no, please. Yeah. Please go ahead. No, I think that's dope. Like, and the the sound schedule that you put out was fucking really, really cool. And I think, like, for me, this one is actually presented a little bit of a challenge in that I had to sort Keeping of, as you the... say, keep it keep it more yeah. tethered because this is yeah. something that, unlike most of the other shit I do, like this is something that I'm going to be, you know, or that we're it's, I'm not the only one that's worked on it, but that we're going to be presenting for other people to use. And so we want to make sure it's like legit and in line and like you know um well i love it you took you cogent. Know, you took, yeah you and you took it further i love the idea you know I, I went through a postpartum depression after releasing it because i lost 
this thing that kept me mm. focused and working on it you know and then once you just need to get pregnant one, again keats <laughs> right yeah I, I mean yeah i mean it, it was like a pregnancy i just you know wanted the child back in the womb <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh you know and i love that you're it, it it didn't stop with the release like it's all for something that you guys are going to do together ritualistically and you know it keeps keeps growing and it keeps keeps doing this thing and i think that's just a wonderful idea Hell yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I know. And I love that. I'm thinking about like sort of feedback loops too now, like, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, we can make these things and then we can come back to them and like use them for another thing and like add another layer and like right. sort of do that infinitum. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. That's such a cool idea. And, uh, you know, I might, uh, I might crib some of that in the future because it, it really, <laughs> I'm it sure I didn't it's make it up. So. That it just never ends. You know, <laughs> it's funny. I think coming from, um, you know, an artistic or, you know, music background, right. You, you release an album and you think it's like, oh, it's everybody else's now, like onto the next one. And like, it doesn't need to be like that. Like, I don't understand, you know, this kind of aesthetic of like once you put something out that you can't just retool it and fuck it up and do different stuff with it as it keeps growing and i think that's a really like freeing idea of just art in general like fuck you just because i released it doesn't mean it's not you know finished yeah. or it'll never be finished yeah you i know? think that that contextualization really does come from a sort of commodified commodification of art right like right. it's out it's released now make something new i can sell right like yeah or just like you know push on like next sure. project because it's about the process sure right? i mean and the that, process some... doesn't need to be over sure and I, yeah oh uh, you know there's something to be said for like <laughs> leaving things rest when they're done sure. too i mean yeah. i've had problems in the past with completing work because uh of you know ob obsessive uh nitpicking and things like that so yeah <laughs> there's a balance there too for sure <laughs> i'm literally uh you know polishing my shotgun every time i work on this book i've been working on for fucking ever <laughs> <laughs> every time i talk to you <laughs> i'm like no i gotta edit this gotta do that yeah it's just yeah just this uh you know because it is about the process and i've realized like that's my real drug of choice is you know just getting in depth with the ritualiz ritualization of creation like i i adore that like lock me in a room leave me alone like tell me to finish something i probably never will because i never want to i just want to keep you know sure adding and subtracting and just and and like if you're if you're putting something communal like that together i think that's just that's super powerful and i really really dig that yeah i just i i don't know i just felt this like really deep desire and i think a lot of other people did too because you know we were social animals and we still are being yeah. you know uh put in this really unnatural situation in terms of like what we're evolved to do and like in terms of interacting with each other and stuff obviously it was necessary but it was also like very very stressful and traumatic and and i think there yeah. was a lot of feelings of um isolation and just like a sort of deep longing for connection right and so yeah, that's sort was, of what the heart of it but yeah it was a um you know trial by fire for me i mean i didn't start like uh the youtube thing or you know what i mean like i'll do discord really until all of this happened and you know the beauty that came from it is you know i relish in but there's also those stinkers you know <laughs> it's like it's very you know uh, it's a mixed bag but as it should be um but yeah and i i do think this this past you know um tang i don't know this past uh fabric that we're all under you know because of that so hmm. yeah i get you i get you <laughs> I do want to talk about Gratis Animus, though, and I really um, adore this project. I will say, you know, I think that uh, there's a need for people to over explain, especially in the artistic and magical communities. So when you sent me the essay, I was like, I hope I hope she doesn't, you know, like there's there's a feeling of like I, I want to just experience it without reading it. But I have to say, like the essay in tandem with it was 
a beautiful picture together. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and I, I, re- I really it. dug it. And it's, um, you know, I think that, like I said, I think that people can get lost in, you know, over explaining. But um, I have some choice cuts here I'd like to read. Um, okay. You mentioned, <laughs> I'm so nervous now. <laughs> I know when you said like this is beautiful stuff. Um, you said when I began this project, these internal walls were related to issues surrounding a a desire or yeah a a desire to be heard, seen, and understood, but feeling blocked by fear and shame. B the need for connection to an expression of sexuality and sexual identity, and C philosophical questions about the existence and nature of a self or selves and where this quantity might be located. And I just thought like as as a prompt you know for this <laughs> beautiful <a> <laughs> freeing of like of of trauma of like you know what what has this process been like for you to release something that is you know so personal and yet so magnanimous. Um I think that for me, like, there's still a little bit of a feeling of um, surrealness about it, like, just yeah. in terms of, like, having this conversation about this thing that I was really never sure that I would be able to release, even though for whatever reason, like, I really felt the need to. And um, so, yeah, I definitely, like, I was telling you a little bit earlier, it almost feels as though it is something that happened to somebody else which right. to me makes yeah. me understand that it was effective because that was sort of a little bit of the point you know of of, hmm. of growth so yeah well yeah and like to your point of you know what is it, like how does it affect these selves right i like that you can now kind of objectively feel like the discordant nature of you know maybe the trauma that you were passing through and it feels like it's somebody else because you've kind of, you know, moved past it, right? Yeah, I think m- maybe I think that that is a that what you said makes sense. So yes, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, because it's a it's a it's a wonderful work of art. Um, you know, it's super intimate, and I just I really love the like just the audio journal and the ritualization aspect of it. And you said that you you use them in rituals like uh you were doing other things and kind of listening and i get that from you know my own audiomancy practices i do that all the time like i'll put stuff on and you know work different you know rituals or whatever can't find another synonym for it but you know (laughs) (laughs) like like i love that you're like living inside these things and i call it like the hollow earth of these loops you know where you're finding like the the tandem kind of nature and where it like builds different stuff, just kind of re-listening and working through different things. And can you yeah. talk a little bit about like the rituals that, you know, you would uh, kind of re-experience these soundscapes and journals? Um, sure. Yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to make a quick comment about what you're saying about this like idea of like exploring these things. Like there's this idea of like this infinite outer space, right? This mm-hmm. universe that can be Yeah. But like, I think that that exists within too. Like there's like an infinite right. inner space. And um, so you could explore that. And maybe there's uh, not a difference between those things. Who knows? Who cares? Sorry to <laughs> tangent yeah. off there. No, but, no, um, I get you though. I absolutely term- get that. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of the ritual, like, I mean, how how graphic do you want me to get? I mean, these are I mean, it's as graphic as you're comfortable with. Like, um, you know, I, I I was just interested in seeing how, or just you know, kind of like visualizing how you're kind of re-experience these, re-experiencing these audio journals, these you know, scapes and like what you're using and doing. But if it's, uh, you know, if you're uncomfortable talking about it, that's so. Totally oh, fun. no, yeah. no. Okay. Yeah. I just, just a little, I just needed a little clarification. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Though that makes total sense. Like, I think that for me it is, or it was a sort of similar process as what you were talking about, like listening to this track and finding new places in it, um, yeah. finding like new experiences in it. And like, while listening to it, recording another one, that would be added to it yeah 
So like it, it's just sort of again the idea of like this building feedback, you know, positive yes. feedback loop kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, to be quite literal, a lot of my audiomancy stuff is tape loops of stuff recorded in a ritual, you know, the day before, and then sitting there meditating with it, adding stuff to it, and you know, on and on and on it goes. So like, yeah, I think I, you know. I could see that like how how these which were like very intimate journals to begin with right they were mm -hmm. like very intimate journals and then you're listening to them and you're adding them to different things and and different motions and behaviors and you're like existing within them as a soundtrack right yeah yeah definitely like these are yes these are very um intimate recordings of of these like solo sex rituals that i was doing um, mm -hmm. And I actually still continue to do as part of my devotional work in the paradigm that I'm working in. Um, yeah. One of the, uh, one of the, the words like that sang to me when listening to it, when you, you realize singularity. Mm. Um, that like, uh, like in, in the, you know, gratis animus in the music. I, I'm pretty sure that's what you said. You're like, this is singularity. Yeah, it's a fucking yeah. singularity. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> I was exactly like, I, I, <laughs> I totally get what you mean though. And those like those oblivions of like perfect, you know, emotion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's totally. Cool to work through that like magically. I think that's uh, you know, I yeah, think yeah, I, I think it's it's really brave and honest and I, I I love the work. Yeah, it's cool. Thank you, dude. Yeah, and I think that I've connect I connected with like some of what I've heard you say about your audiomantic work, um, in terms of this idea of kind of um like capturing the qualia of a moment, and right. like you know just like it, how do like it can't really be pinned down, but it can be like I don't know. Yeah, there's a, the there's weird a you can draw a mirror of it or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, for sure. It feels like everything and always, but <laughs> it's like, how do you explain that? You know. Yes. My newest well, yeah. project, my newest sound magic project, is actually a short one about zero and infinity, which is a concept that I mean, me and everybody else is fucking obsessed with. <laughs> so sure. <yes>. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, ugh, fuck. I I don't even know how to get down to that road. Zero and infinity. Yeah, you know it's funny too. It's like I got a lot of garbled words about everything under the sun. But when you ask me to, you know, describe or, you know, um, you know, build language around these feelings, I I'm just a, you know, I'm just cluster fucked about it. Dude. Oh my god, I just finished a book that I really fucking enjoyed called The Master and His Emissary by Ian McElchrist. You've mentioned that to me before. Probably yeah. have. I'm a little obsessed yeah. with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, this could be contextualized in terms of like the experiences of the right versus the left brain, you know, like sure. the, the yeah. things that we experience in the moment, like there is a layer of removal when we go to put them into language, right? Like, yeah. It's just necessarily true, and, and it's difficult, and it, it's clunky, right? But it's the best oh, that we have. Beautifully <laughs> so, clunky, yeah. Other than art, right? Art is the the universal language, of course. But yes. But yeah, I agree that yeah, and I do find solace in the beauty of the clunk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, just a trash wordsmith, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean embrace trash we just did a ritual about trash that's right yes, yeah right. i was like, there we yeah, love yeah. it <laughs> no that was good that was fun take your trash um, and turn it into something else <laughs> yeah i was uh i wasn't feeling well that day and like was like should i join and i couldn't get my mic to work so i was just listening to uh what's his name from faith blind talk about boiled mayonnaise you know and i was like oh, oh this is amazing. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry then, that like, you had to hear that through. No, when no, you weren't it, feeling well. <laughs> in and of itself was like a liminal space, like where I, I like, you know, yeah, I, that was that was Yara moved past the nausea. Yeah, that, that was Yara from Faithline Council podcast, and and right. we did have a long talk about hot lettuce and boiled mayonnaise. Yeah, um, and but, I'm like I said, I'm yeah. sorry that you had to hear it. 
<laughs> no, it was great. And, you know, I joined in and we laughed and it was fun. But like the the overarching picture of it and like my own kind of liminal praxis on like trying to get through the nausea of the day. And like this was uh, the trial by fire, you know, and it worked and then it became humorous. And like I find in those moments when we're talking about such like deep shit, whether it's like zero and infinity or, you know. I don't know, like addiction or trauma, like humor is just, it's the, it's the gilded range of emotion, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one of our most useful inventions, I think. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's been fun. And, uh, you know, I want people to know, I don't know if, uh, cause faith blind is a podcast in and of itself and you're working in conjunction with them. Oh, Can you explain yes. a little bit about your Oh, yeah. They are a sibling show on the Green Mushroom Podcast Network, um, which is just sort of something that arose organically out of our uh, various collaborations. Um, we've got Faith Line Council Podcast, which is a you know awesome place to get sort of like practical, um, hands-on info about chaos magic. Um, and then my show, Lux Occult. And then my other two shows, Ad Hoc History, which is a fun history show that I do with my brother. That's and right. And you can actually it's, it's hear Derek podcast. Hunter on there. Um, and you can hear Derek Hunter on regular Lux Cult. And oh, yeah. And we love Derek Hunter. Big shout out. Yeah, actually, you should cut friend. that out. I said that badly. Um, yes, you can hear Derek Hunter, our great friend, on both Lux Cult uh, and Ad Hoc no, I'm History. I'm leaving that in. I'm leaving it in <laughs> exactly that way. Because the more we say his name, the more hugs he gets. <laughs> Okay, well, yes, I said it poorly. <laughs> I'm trying to speak English. I do speak it as a native speaker, but I'm still not very good at it, and I apologize. Um, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> With Punky. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, the Green Mushroom Podcast Network, it's, yes, it's an awesome collection of shows, Unearthing Paranormalcy, um, Ad Hoc History, Administrism. Yes, uh, a small thing that grew out of some collaborations, much like We the Hollowed. So, right, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are just way better at the internet. I don't know about that. I I am very... Dude, I actually... It's been like less than two years that I've been even using Instagram and stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm still figuring it out in a lot of ways. So. Oh, I mean, me too. I've, God, how long have I been doing it, you know? Um, I just... Yeah, I just have this uh, inertia, you know, with a lot of social media. And I know it's... Like, I'd like to, I love how communal you guys are and like delineating, you know, the sort of like roles and support, you know, and I think that's, that's something to be admired. And, you know, you, you're all doing great work. Like it's, it's uh, definitely hitting uh, a, a genuine spot in a lot of disparate communities. And I think like the, the discord is a, is a perfect reminder of like, how wonderful and eclectic you know everyone is working and i've met a lot of great people through it so thank you for that yeah i know dude and i'm so glad that you've been like hanging out with us on there it's been cool having you in the chats and shit and i mean i i do like discord because it really it's it's basically just like message boards it focuses on the conversation not about um you know building this profile and all right yes. like you can yeah. just go there and talk to people, which is like hard to find sometimes, right? Like, yeah, you know, like I said, you know, I wasn't kidding when I said trial by fire over the past year when it came to social media and doing stuff, you know, I got doxxed recently. And so, you shitty. know, it's funny, just like the animosity um, from anonymous people yeah well, and so, a lot of people have a lot of pain and uh, yeah hard stuff going on so yeah. they decide to be assholes and that's unfortunate <laughs> like, it's unfortunate yeah. and i you know i can definitely be an asshole too and i i get it you know i just uh yeah it's just funny the links um of care i think a lot of like uh purpose that social media has and I really do enjoy it, like when it's beautiful, like it is with certain Discord, you know, groups, whether it's uh, Faith Blind or it's, you know, Doug's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Discord. Doug from What Magic Is This has yeah. a great Discord, too. That's another great place to hang out. Yeah. And Eric uh, Miller and I, Eric Millar, sorry, he's going to hate me for saying Miller. 
Um, I've been talking <laughs> about, uh, you know, doing a We the Hollowed one, and I was just the pressure of modding it and tending it seems a little much for me yeah yeah but i get it i get why it's delineated to you know you have people in there to kind of help pick up the load so mm -hmm. yeah it's a beautiful thing i think yeah discord is definitely a one of the better ones for sure yeah, 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 and and I think Yara in particular has done a lot of work in terms of like building that particular community and stuff. And so, yes, yeah. shout out to him. He was very yelk, very very welcoming to me when I first showed up there, and that's one of the main reasons I stuck around. So, yes, yeah, and like we have, you know, these subset communities too. Just in, you know, I'll say it again, like you know, these kind of disparate anarchic magics and stuff. Like it's funny how small the world gets when you know we're all kind of listening to each other and uh you know discussing things you know not publicly streamed or whatever or, you know like these communities that we're building and it really is like a beautiful thing and so sure I think you guys yeah are doing good work no fuck yeah and thank you and if anybody listening right now like i think that's a kind of a cool message right like you know whatever yeah. you're into there's other people out there that are into it and like they might want to hang out and talk about it too, find the right? others. Like, yes find the others but be careful right you know and that's, I did the, that's the balance be careful be but careful. find them yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> i like that yeah i did want to mention you know uh you did say in the essay for gratis animus you said uh personal milestones towards a feeling of wholeness that i've been able to cross and i thought that was a beautiful worded sentiment about any kind of magical or artistic working it's just it's a wholeness right and if you can hit that wholeness you know i i don't know i can't think of a, a greater sentiment than you know why we create or why we keep doing what we're doing yeah no totally and thank you i appreciate the compliment like i think um and, and maybe this is just sort of a classic um a cult or otherwise you know otherwise sort of quest right like this idea of like um finding the missing pieces of yourself or finding the balance like i'm thinking of like alchemy right like um the idea of the holy hermaphrodite right like sure finding yeah. those like missing aspects of yourself or like um undoing the things that happened that took you away from your true nature quote if that's a thing i don't know <laughs> right uh, true will, <laughs> interesting yeah. to think about none the, yeah nonetheless, that's yes. the whole episode <laughs> <laughs> But I'm sure that the concept, um, even if it's not accurately described, still resonates for people, probably. But yeah, I just, you know, I'd like uh, it should be commended. And I think, you know, you're doing beautiful work and it, it really should be commended how honest and open you are through all these processes. Because like Praxis, you know, there's a lot out there. There's a lot of uh, things to be there are a lot of communities to be a part of a lot of people to listen to different voices whatever and there's just something about the vulnerability that you allow in that you know is is astounding to me and i've always really appreciated that thank you dude and yeah that's um i think that's actually really like kind of a poignant observation in a lot of ways because like that was one of the things that i discovered through this project was that there and i think i might have said it in one of the tracks like there is power and vulnerability yeah and like yeah. if you can learn um to be comfortable sitting in that it's a lot of power and it's but it's a different kind of power that is typically valued i think in our culture um, right so that's another interesting uh experience to have with experimenting with that you know like feeling this other um way of of power that isn't really talked about maybe yeah and you know you've said something too in um some discord chats that like one specific i can think of and you know and i couldn't applaud louder but it's like if you if you think you know anything you're wrong you know <laughs> <laughs> and i was like yeah fuck yeah <laughs> you know it's like the more you know the less you do and it's it's just a constant 
you know, the struggle. The more you learn, the less you know. Stuff. That's the truth. <laughs> the more you learn, yeah. the less you know, right? Exactly. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think that's a maxim that works, you know? I mean, that's not even, that's not true either. But like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all we have are approximations for these things. Anyway. Right, exactly. And I think, you know, in this age of, you know, dogma and uh, certainty, especially within the cult communities, it's, uh, it's tired and uh boring <laughs> are there is there a certainty in a lot i don't i'm not like that tapped into a cult community well like, yeah you're I, doing you know? well then yeah no i think maybe of like a wider you know range of things that i've i've experienced with and trying to find the others yeah um, well and that makes sense yeah. that people would um want the comfort of like of pretending about certainty right. like I mean, I don't know. I can't speak to other people's experiences. Right, I don't know. But like, for me, maybe. like, I mean, I don't. <laughs> yeah, who knows, right? Like, I exactly. Yeah. I and you know what? If it's working for those people, fuck yeah. Like, do it that yeah. way. I don't care. Like, that's well, why. That, you know, that's <laughs> just uh, that's a perfect uh, you know uh, sentiment about the vulnerability too to share the idea of. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. You know, just doing it to do it because it feels good and if people dig it that's awesome you know if people can take something from it or join me in celebrating this experiment that's great but i don't know what the fuck you know is going well, on yeah i mean and why pretend either like it's right. a, like communi okay, so communication is already difficult enough and if you're like adding these other layers of obfuscation up on top of it like that's just removing its effectiveness even more so yes that's not effective communication to do that like right. or maybe what you're communicating is something other than what you're trying to communicate which is something more about yourself i don't know right like, and that's why you're here you clean up my clunky uh language so, <laughs> i literally couldn't have said it better myself <laughs> <laughs> well luxa like always a pleasure and uh oh yeah if you want to we can talk about some halloweeny stuff yes um, let's i don't want to do. keep you for too long but uh yeah I'm, you know i'm here as long as you like dude i really appreciate you having me and it's a huge honor to be here so i will talk about halloween stuff as long as you want to halloweeny stuff yeah all right <laughs> um I've got like a just a myriad of things, you know, I think the rubric was when I did it with Douglas, it's just, you know, talking about things that help us kind of get in the season, let our little inner goth ch children come out, you know, and play. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, uh, what do you got? Okay, so like, one of my favorite, uh, one, I think one of my all time favorite horror movies, like, and the genre of cheesy zombie movie mm. has to be dead alive because nice. there uh, is the scene with Peter the lawnmower. Jackson. Yeah, no. the lawnmower scene really like hem yeah. you know really buttons it up for me. Like, <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. And um, but I will also say, um, Event Horizon. Ah, I was just talking to somebody about this. Like, really? what a good movie that was. And they were like, <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that in forever. Yeah, Sam Neill, like, at the end, it's fucking... Oh, and when the guy gets, you know, his vessels pop when he's out in the decompression chamber into space. Like, that movie is classic. It is classic. And it does and not get enough love. So, I think that that's for awesome. me... Yeah, no, and it's very fun. I think that for me, like, one of the reasons why it has this type of resonance is the circumstances in which I first saw it. So, oh, yeah. I was pretty young at the time when it came out and, like, definitely not old enough to buy movie tickets for that particular movie. But there was another movie that my friend and I bought tickets to. This was, like, I think it was, like, a matinee on, like, a Tuesday or something. Like, there wasn't anybody in this theater um so yes this is what you used to do you could buy a ticket for another movie and then just oh, go just into the one that yeah. you want yeah. to see if you were too young Did this was the before time. there was cameras everywhere and shit or whatever right. but um so we're, we're we realize that we're like completely alone in this theater right and so we're like okay cool so we sit in the very middle of it we're just watching it 
and it's getting creepier and creepier. We're like looking behind us, right? Like there's just something weird about being in this huge open room that's just, you know, designed for all of these people, but you're just alone in there. And we eventually, by the end of the movie, had to move to the very back row because the feeling of like having anything behind us was too creepy. I love the localization (laughs) of the self within the movie theater, like further away from the screen. Like, well and also just that feeling of having that exposed back you know yeah, like we could feel creepy. the back yeah. like the wall behind us if we went to the back row yeah at least and- yeah at least there's a stoppage <laughs> there i get that you know i used to consider movie theaters uh my church you know mm. and i used to do that all the time like i was a latchkey kid and i would just go go to the movie theater and fucking you know just sneak into different movies for like six hours just you hang know. out in there and yeah exactly. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah dude that makes sense <laughs> but yeah event horizon that stuck with me and a lot of it too you know i was raised um catholic for the first half of my childhood and then jewish for the second half so there was always this kind of like residual fear of mm-hmm. like you know demonic kind of religion it wasn't that i be- i believed in it but i always loved like you know uh demonic kind of films because it they 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 spooked me you know whether it's like the exorcist or event horizon and that whole thing where they you know it's a black hole they go through hell to travel space and those scenes of like what happened to the crew before you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the oh. last group. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember as a kid just, you know, just scared witless. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. And, and and like you brought up the last scene, which is, and seeing it in the theater, it was like, oh, God. And like my yeah. friend and I, she and I were like hugging each other. <laughs> like, let's get the fuck out of here and never <laughs> speak of this again. <laughs> you can, I think you can find on YouTube, but. So they, you know, it's another uh, studio butcher where there was a lot more scenes with that that first crew that they shot. And it was they I think they gave them like an NC-17. They had to cut it down because of how crazy it was. But I think on YouTube, you can find the deleted footage of all the stuff they cut out. And it's pretty crazy. Okay. Yeah. Well. Maybe that would be a fun Halloween activity. That's I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, Event Horizon nailed it. Like, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so for spooky books, House yes. of Leaves, hands down, dude. Have you have you read this? What is it? Oh, House of Leaves. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. I mean, I've tried millions of times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna front here as a you know as a you know some pseudo intellectuals like yeah i've read it and it's fine you know it's like no i've tried i've tried to read it many times <laughs> it's like a, it's a story that breaks some of the like um definitions of what a story is so it's i not, that makes it, sense that, yeah yeah it's not the story itself that it's just one of those that i'm one of those people that read like 10 books at once mm. and oh that, that makes total that sense circling in the back and well, I there's just, like that book is like getting about it. Yeah. There's so many different levels of narrative taking place, right. and like, yeah, I could see that totally getting lost in in that particular shuffle you were describing for sure. Yeah, but people, you know, like like uh, fans of it, you know, I've I've dear friends who just swear by it, and I, you know, I've I haven't given it the college try. Like, you know, I'll read a passage and then like totally forget what happened when I come back to it. It deserves, I think, one consistent sitting right yeah and there was one other one that i wrote down here this is a sort of existential dread book um mm. the stepford wives and there is a movie about it but it also yeah, the movie is a little different but um yeah. and not the remake with uh, matthew broderick I think oh actually i was probably movie. thinking of the remake i'm not like very an original one yeah informed on cinema so i'm <laughs> guessing it's the remake so, <laughs> okay yeah cool (laughs) Um, but yeah like i've never read the book that that sounds that sounds great i would love to yeah it's very um it's interesting it's very short it's kind of almost like a novella um the plot is different than the version of the movie that i saw um it the plot happens here where the women are actually replaced by 
robots basically right. yeah and yeah it's, it's an interesting um sort of existential dread thing about um you know how how people must fit into society or yeah. like um the relationship um dynamics that have been forged by the patriarchy of, between different genders and all kinds of other things but yes <laughs> it's funny too it's like a, just the cultural zeitgeist of what you know a lot of people use the term stepford wife to mm. i think it's now a karen right or like you know it's 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 to paint this picture of a suburban housewife and they don't know what the uh the source of that is sure right and I, you hear it all the time like oh it's a real stepford wife and it just means you know very clean cut nuclear family suburban wife that has these dark undertones to it you know? yeah well yeah if we're really gonna dissect that label like it means yeah. like depending on what context you take it to the book or the movies or whatever like it means that there's been something like fundamentally altered about you to make yeah, you that way too. so yeah dark way yeah yes. <laughs> yeah oh that's great yeah i want to uh, i want to read that i'm going to write that down because like... <laughs> it's very short it's kind of a fun short read it's um yeah, it's great science fiction. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I just uh, I got some books. I did want to show you though. I think you'll get a kick out of this. So in um uh in Portland, I went to this uh there's there was an old occult shop they used to go to. It was, you know, used to frequent and they had an art showing. And I met this guy, Andrew Gomez, who did this book. I see demons, an illustrated goetic goof. Oh, and very fun. It, <laughs> it's amazing. So it's all of the Goetia <laughs> demons illustrated with funny asides in it. Oh, I love it. I've it's often you. said that I only read the Goetia for the picture. <laughs> right? Or at yeah, least exactly. the ours Goetia. We know it's a whole tradition, but yes. I know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going to piss off a lot of people by saying this, but... <laughs> But are always it, going it is to be angry funny. Kids. Like there's something inherently funny about, you know, just the kind of descriptions of the Goetic demons. And um, I love it because he takes some uh, some artistic license, obviously, to illustrate them, but to also like, you know, basically translate what <laughs> the, the demons do in this really funny way, like Astaroth. Uh, the moody teenager of the Goetic lineup that desperately needs to utilize better personal hygiene. He's been consistently <laughs> angsty ever since his original fall from heaven and won't hesitate to tell you how messed up the system is. He repeatedly calls God a fascist without really knowing what that means. <laughs> okay, so have you worked through the Ars Goetia? Like, have, do you have experience with these entities? I, I'm I mean, curious. I... I, like... I uh, uh... I have some bad, ex I have a bad experience with it. Okay. Um, but yes, like it's, 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 so yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm curious about like meeting these folks and be like, Hey, <laughs> like, I don't know. I've never worked with it before. It, it, I've never yeah. like, felt called to do so. So I just haven't, no, but yeah, like I, it, it was in my, you know, experimental youth. I, I'm still experimental. What am I talking about? But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I just, you know, it just it wasn't it wasn't for me. It it just wasn't a thing. And oh, I'm not shit. one to not like, everything is for everybody. That yeah, makes sense. Exactly. Um, I just thought this was hilarious and like it, you know, takes the pomp and circumstance out of like just how you know heavy that tome is and just it's a really funny, like, you know, um it's the Ars Goetia for idiots, you know, with funny <laughs> illustrations. And it's great. So yeah, um, please check him out. Andrew R. Gomez. I think he's on Instagram. He's a Portland illustrator. Uh, yeah, really funny guy. Total rock and roller. Um, I've been reading this recently. Just came across it. I thought it was pretty fantastic. Monstrous. It's a um, graphic novel. I don't even know how to begin um, describing it. Uh, very fantasy, very occult, kind of peppered, but beautifully illustrated in, in like a fantastical mythology all their own. Um, and it's it's just it reminds me of like an autumnal kind of read. And so 
I've been enjoying it. It's um, it's like Dungeons and Dragons with the occult, but also a fucking badass female, um, you know, rogue. It sounds very dope. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, of course every every October I'll crack this guy open. It's uh, Colin Wilson's mysteries. Is like okay. paranormal. Very um, fun. Yeah. So and it's it's I just I love the way he writes. Like his voice is just so loud in my head whenever <laughs> I read him. It's just this proper, you know, British like breakdown of you know funny uh you know paranormal kind of activities. I love that. Stuff. Okay, so Keats, do you have a favorite cryptid? Um God, you know what? I think it's got to be Chupacabra. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. I think because that was so prevalent in my youth in, uh, you know, New Mexico and Arizona. It that was like our Sasquatch. Okay. Right? That makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. And it was always so funny. The goat sucker, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you? Do you have a favorite one? Oh, man. It's, it's a tough call, but I think right now I'm going to have to go with Mothman. Oh, yeah, of course. Point Pleasant, Pennsylvania. Yeah, because of all yeah. of the weird shit surrounding the story and like it's the Venom. So yeah, so weird. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm with you on that. I think mine is a little more humorous. But like, uh, <laughs> yeah, Mothman, like the Mothman prophecies, that was, uh, that was intense. <laughs> yeah. Wild stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I love it. Like the weird phone calls and like, you know, it's it's just like, yeah. <laughs> It's so weird because I think a lot of people hang on to this cryptid idea that it's, you know, like a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot or, you know, uh, something in the peripheral. But to have one that transcends like just crazy sightings into like interactive phone calls and, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, just all the weirdness that surrounded yeah. like the whole story. It's, it's just fun. So, yeah. Yeah. Point Pleasant, uh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> right? Or was it uh, um... Connecticut? don't remember i think pennsylvania though if i remember yeah i, I don't know Pleasant. yeah they so, that's, the that funny, sounds uh, right the funny mothman statue yes I, uh, with the yeah. very juicy butt is what i've heard he yeah. comment about it <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah the juicy <laughs> butt and the red eyes um <laughs> yeah and like uh other than that i just picked this up i thought this was really uh fun and cute uh it's called the girl from the other side and it's like a manga um i'm not a big like uh manga person but the illustrations in here it's a it's a very it reminds me of uh the witch the film in a way uh just like the depictions in here and it's very um it's it's like it's all about autumnal detritus and you know the veil and all that stuff and it's a goat headed you know kind of a servitor that like helps this uh little girl kind of pass you know through the uh paranormal realms and stuff it's pretty cool um but uh yeah i don't you know i'm not uh i'm not finished with it so i can't really recommend it but i thought it'd be fun to talk about um, so have you ever had like a ghost experience yeah, uh, many when I was younger. I actually had a, uh, so I was in a program called GATE when I was a kid. It's called Gifted Academically Through Education. We had to take a separate bus, you know, like twice a week to this other school and do like higher level learning things. And um, I revealed to my teacher in gate, like a lot of the paranormal experiences that I was having in my house in Phoenix. One of them was, you know, and like, you know, as, as I grow older, I start contextualizing it. Like it's, you know, it was probably sleep paralysis or whatever, but uh, you know, I had this reoccurring thing where uh, I would be in bed, like reading a comic book or something. The whole entire room would flash red and then my tape player would play, like my cassette player would play, and it would just be radio tuning, and it would scare the shit out of me. And uh, I mentioned this to 
my teacher in gate and she had a fucking meeting with my parents about my mental health <laughs> that sucks dude <laughs> yeah that's very shitty <laughs> so yeah i mean that's one of many um when i was living in portland for the first time i was like renting this basement apartment and uh you know crummy drunk musician like trash everywhere and you know um and i had a friend staying with me you know he's in a sleeping bag on the um on the floor and we had this shared vision we had this this light above us that was a very dim yellow and it it just kind of stayed on and we would pass out you know watching something on tv or something and we both woke up one night and it was like this kind of disembodied head of a woman and she was just like rubbing her head on the light and I literally looked to my friend and I said, are you seeing this? And he's like, yeah, what the fuck? Like, it was a shared weird. experience. Very yeah. weird. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, so I've had many and a lot of like, there's, there's shit I can't explain in my audiomancy practices. There's shit that like, there's visions and shit that I hear that I find out later. Like, yes. are a thing. There's you know? weird emergent properties that I found with that stuff for me as well. Yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. I don't yeah, know if I would contextualize it as like ghosts or whatever, but yeah, there's no, like yeah. it burns it properties. Like, yeah, totally. Yeah, I had one where, you know, I was singing this chant, uh, it was called Druha, Druha. And I knew in my head how it was spelled. It was D-R-U-J-A. And I, I kept singing it and was like kind of in a trance with a guitar in this like entombed little room I used to use. And I saw this like wolf kind of beast appear and and talk to me but i could see that he was scaling a mountain and i was like oh that's a really fantastic you know vision that was cool and then i'm reading some you know uh book about zoroastrianism and find that there there are beasts called the druj d-r-u-j who look exactly as i saw but i found that out oh, later interesting okay yeah so Very there's cool. a lot of like you know that pro those properties, um, but yeah, I just think it's funny that I had to have a teacher meeting about my mental health. <laughs> yes, well, I was thinking like when you were saying that like that must have been cool to have this um, you know gifted and talented place to go to talk to other people who were like yeah yeah and I yeah and when I talk to people about this they shake their heads and stuff because like. That whole concept is, in some ways, like still sort of like, whatever. We it's can weird, talk yeah. So it, was a, <laughs> it was a target on your back too, for sure. But know? at least it helped you contextualize why your experiences might have been different than the people around you. I remember writing in like second grade. I wrote a a paper on Alzheimer's. You know, like I don't think there's a lot of people that can say that or like they were right? yeah. about the degradation of neurology you know <laughs> yeah time. no for sure so i mean there was a lot of cool parts to it but yeah at the yeah. same time i just i i thought you know i thought she was interested and she was kind of milking me for these stories because i wasn't really telling anybody except for my friend who was on the bus and she overheard it and you know would like kept asking me and like you know i would tell her all these paranormal experiences i was having and then yeah next thing i know like i'm in trouble you know so yeah i mean and i guess like maybe from her perspective it was like you all should just be aware of what's happening with your kid or whatever like you i don't know right? wrong like, you know uh, who knows like it, it could have yeah. just been projected internalized trauma who knows i've got but, a lot of that shit to deal with <laughs> no that makes total sense like but just the idea of like you know recognizing that that was a thing because that for me that w i didn't grow up in that context where that was like a thing and so it's like well why am i having such a different experience than the people around me like yeah is yeah. there something like well i assume there must be something like super wrong with me that i had to like you know hide or else something terrible would probably happen so there yeah. was like a lot of energy spent in just trying to like um you know I guess, yeah, hide the fact that my experiences were not similar necessarily to the 
ones that people around me were having. And um, so, yeah, I yeah. guess no matter what happens, it fucks you up and you learn from it. Right. <laughs> That's just yeah. life. <laughs> but yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything fucks you up. <laughs> Everything sucks and it fucks you up, but then you can learn something if you want to. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I think that's a beautiful place to end it. I think <laughs> okay. it's that that sentiment alone, you know, <laughs> everything fucks you up, but you learn from it. You do better, and it still will fuck you up forever. But there's also beauty in in that. Um, yeah. That th whatever. If everything were always the same all the time, things would be very fucking boring. And, you know, I absolutely agree, you know, as someone that struggles with a lot of mental disfluencies and, you know, my own traumas and all of that shit, like, it's the process for me, you know, and a lot of this is the process and I appreciate it. Fuck and yeah. I think, and I, th Yeah. There's something like kind of beautiful and like, you know, if you can accept that that's the situation and just saying like, okay, well, my life's work is to just figure this out and that's all that it's it, the all of the answers are self-contained in that way perhaps yeah, i don't that's know all it needs to be <laughs> <Yes>. yeah <laughs> yeah that that there is a beauty to that and a, a weird like a weird finality of an ad infinitum you know <laughs> like, <laughs> well as long as you know this works out then i guess that's fine or as long as i can get through it you know well i mean yeah smile. like what else right i don't know what else can we expect from life other than just to live it i don't know right <laughs> like yeah you know i guess whatever whatever way do you contextualize that obviously there's a lot of fucking nuance there but like uh, when it comes down to it like i don't know i mean it's probably just all about the experience right I mean, that's what I say. Like I said, you know, just lock me in a room. Tell me to work on something. Just never ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> never ask me and to that's finish. Life, you know? <laughs> just don't ask for it. I like it. No, dude, I yeah. think and I think that like contextualizing yourself. Um, I mean, I've heard Aiden Walker talk about this as somebody who learns somebody like that's a great um, a growth mindset student. to uh, embrace. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Perennial student, you know, and and that goes right back to our, you know, kind of a supreme agnosticism, right? <laughs> sure. Like, well, when yeah. you assume that you have the answer, you stop looking for the answer. <laughs> you stop looking for the information if you think you've already found it. Yeah. And that there seems to be a very dreaded, you know, non-relieving quality to that, to figure it out and then still have 40 years on this planet. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> like oh no, god it's... then it's just waiting <laughs> well yeah like that's in some ways like that's solve like solving all like, finding the answers to all of your questions is like god I'm, I'm even thinking now i this is probably like a silly western trope but i have heard that there's like a quote chinese curse about may you find what you're looking for oh yeah right I've heard like that. yeah yeah. I hope you I hope you get everything you want. You yes. Know? That's like the scariest. Dude, and <laughs> to be honest, in the past, like I I had gotten that and that was really when I hit rock bottom. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. Like uh you know, I've contextualized that a bit too, where it was when I had nothing but time and resources and too many options and it fucked me up you know or like it, thinking uh, like yeah it's like this is what i thought i wanted and mm -hmm. like realizing that it's nowhere close to being the the actual thing that you wanted behind the thing that you got right like yeah yeah, yeah i mean that's a that'll that'll put me to sound sleep tonight <laughs> that, you know <laughs> like keep the struggle the struggle is life yeah i yeah. mean that's yes i think that's definitely true yeah i'm i'm with you though because yeah when i think back to my you know kind of disillusioned self it was that i had every resource at the time 
and you know nothing was tenable at the same time where you know i could i i just i had no um resolve because it was like endless and you know yeah. given all that much freedom and that time and those resources you know yeah me insane. <laughs> for me it was like i discovered that the things that i thought i wanted were not the things that i wanted they were hollow shells they were yeah what a beautiful fabrications you know yes solution i mean not solution what a beautiful you know experience or revelation yeah i mean it sucked but i'm glad glad like it did suck it was like everything that i've worked for is nothing and it doesn't matter at all and that's all i mean gods to take it to a little bit more of an existential place like that's always going to be the case like anything that we build is just a sand castle and that's okay but like does it matter to you like that's what's important right and and i i discovered that what i had achieved didn't matter at all to me yeah that makes i mean that makes absolute sense i think you know it's funny and i think too in the scheme of everything i wanted to do professionally i've done thinking that that was the route and it never it never was and you know, there's a, a, a solemn kind of, uh, you know, jubilation about like, well, at least I know I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, totally. And I think like getting back to what you were talking about earlier about just this sort of like centered um, focus on the process, right? Like, yeah, it's always going to be a process, it's always going to be changing. So like, yeah. to think that you've arrived at a destination like um you're not going to stop like you're that's just a stop in a larger journey amen amen <laughs> lux estrada um thank you so much you you know you're a continuing inspiration with all your projects and everything that you're doing and it was a complete honor to have you on so thank you Stu, thank you so much for hanging out and talking with me. I really appreciate you having me on. And uh, yeah, fuck yeah. It's a huge honor to be here. Amen. <laughs> Preach it. No, I was going I was gonna go with, like, <laughs> I was gonna cause some issues going gospel with that. But, uh, so. <laughs> no, this is so much fun. And yeah, we got to do the Halloweeny. We got to talk about everything. I just, uh, you know, this this is just uh, 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 a sliver, right? We're gonna keep doing this. We're gonna move forward. You know, the process isn't ending. Yeah, we'll, whatever is we'll going continue. on with you right now, it's gonna be different <laughs> soon, right? That's just how shit works. So, amen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I just mean with us too, and like you being here, like you'll oh, be on yeah. again. And I will know, be happy we'll just... to come back whenever you like. I, yes, I love collaborating awesome. with you. So, yes, this would be fantastic. Well, thank you, Luxa. And I, you know, appreciate all that you do. Everyone, you know, can, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make intros and outros for everything so everyone knows where to f- find your wonderful works, whether it's the Green Mushroom Project, the Hypha Sigil, you know, the, um, all of the assorted animal. bullshit. Yes. <laughs> no, all, all the good stuff. All the good stuff. You know, you, you wear as many hats as I do, you know, and I get you very much. Um, and in the way that you know, I don't, right? <laughs> like, I I get the, I love the process of of finding out all these cool things that you're doing. It's uh, it, it really is inspirational. So thank no, you. No, fuck yeah, dude. And I I don't yes, I think I get you too as much as any people can get each other in right. this certain context that yeah. we're in. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> I love it. And we're gonna leave it with two agnostics going. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you so much i'm gonna thank end you. this broadcast sounds good. haunt on folks thank you so much bye <laughs>I want to thank Luxa again for sharing her wonderful works with me I think gratis animus is truly a brave and brilliant project uh, as as most of her projects are but gratis animus to me especially from the audiomancy world 
is uh it's 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 invaluable it's uh, it's a wonderful wonderful piece of art uh that connotes the self with an also reaching to the depths of the other i've got to get ready i'm playing a show tonight it's my first one and close to two years and it's my first one in seattle and almost 10. As I've said, you've been privy to this chat if you're a Patreon subscriber, patreon.com slash pragmagic. I'm back on the horse, and we're riding still. And I want to thank everybody for reaching out as I've consorted these torrid tundras of self, and everyone's been so generous, and I'm glad to be back on the horse. And we shall ride again. So with that... I want to say thank you and haunt on. Is the face of man. Down.